Ten years ago, Concert Steelworks closed and the town's face was changed forever. Good evening. Tonight we take a close-up look at a town that can be seen as a microcosm of some of the changes to the industrial landscape that have happened in Britain during the last decade. When Concert Steelworks closed and 3,500 men faced the dole, it seemed impossible that this could really be the start of a massive shake-up of the nation's traditional and heavy industries. But as the cold blast of the 80s economic storm blew through the region, towns lost their major companies, riverbanks their shipyards, and villages their pits. From the beginning of a new decade, it can all be seen as a trend, a feature of the 80s, those 10 years till now. So too can what came next, that desperate need to create a new industrial climate. But returning to concert, it was here in this steel town that the wind blew hardest, and here that the rescue packages were tried out. We're all on our own. Concert relied so much on the steelworks and they've had to learn how to cope without them. They've had to come back off the door queues. Maybe a lot of people went away to find jobs. The town said that, I mean, we were really too young to understand what was going on. We just remember chimneys and all that. That's all you can really remember about it now. For 140 years, iron dominated Consett. It was iron ore and coal found in the wild hills at the head of the Derwent Valley that led to the coming of the foundry and to the building of the town around it. It was here they made the steel for the Sydney Harbour Bridge, for the Blackpool Tower, for the Polaris submarines. It was here by the furnaces that the community was welded together. Then, a decade ago, British Steel announced rationalisation plans. Henceforth, steel would be produced at its coastal plants and Consett's works would close. Consett did not regard it as at all rational and workers took their campaign to save the plant to the capital. But 10 years ago, London was already set to embrace enterprise culture. The march was jerkily out of step with the times. That very word, crusade, belonged to old newsreels and lost causes. We are still workers from Canton. The government was singularly unimpressed. The concert marches returned to a town still under its pall of red iron dust from the works, but one that was already changing. Even here, the realities of the new decade, the economic arguments, a government opposed to supporting nationalised industries had dawned. As the last steel was drawn, Consett, famous for being a company town, overnight became known as a town without a company. But over the last decade, the industrial landscape of Consett has changed. To a new generation, the works and what it stood for has become a school project. We were told to write some things about how we thought concert was. And um, we wrote it on the steelworks closing, like it was 10 years since it closed, so we mentioned that in the song. And the red dust has blown away. And it's picking up. That was the chorus. Um, and how just we landed on our feet, we're on solid ground. It was ten years ago, the heart and soul was lost. This is the story we are told. We don't care about the past now, that's all behind us. It's the future that we're bothered it's about and how we're going to survive in concert instead of having to go away. Death was the past. Consett uh, has a, is a small town. It is well known as a 
It's a former steel making town. In 1980, 140 years of steel making ended, which was a severe blow to the local community. Visitors from the Soviet Union, struggling with their own social and economic upheaval, are shown concert as an example of what the new British industrial philosophy can achieve. Left behind are state-owned industries and interventionist policies. Today, the answer is in the marketplace with the private sector. The changes experienced across the nation have been felt most forcibly in this town on a hill 1,000 feet up. We are about 23 kilometers from Newcastle and from the city of Durham. And the district of Derwentside has a population of about 85,000 people. Thank you. Um, gen gentlemen, I'd just like to remind you that British Steel in 1980 was a state-owned a state -owned industry. A state-owned industry. For Britons and Soviets alike these days, not exactly the path to the future. Ten years ago, Laurie Haveron was a member of that industry's task force, the man who had to pick up the pieces, so to speak, in his work for British steel industry. On the surface, we were helping to encourage jobs. We recognised that we, what we were really trying to do was to encourage wealth creation and to, uh, to encourage entrepreneurs, if you like, uh, to become successful in our areas knowing that that was the proper way, that was the long-term way to actually create new jobs for the area. John Dunbar is chief executive of BSC Industry, the social conscience of British Steel, set up to bring new jobs to 11 steel closure areas. Meeting him is Laurie Haveron, John Dunbar's man on the ground in the northeast. Consit is their most difficult area. Laurie and John are due to meet the rest of the job-creating team at Consit's Civic Centre. We've had over 500 people go out of work, additional to the steelworks. Yes. Now, we all know how much effort it takes to find 100 jobs, let alone 500. There was a hard core of people who were yes. always and, uh, convinced it could hard, work. But there was so much doubt being expressed by outsiders that inevitably we had, we had to have our own internal doubts. The bulk of them are in these four or five large projects yes. Yes. of which we may only get one if yep. we're lucky. Yep. We suddenly found that what we were actually actively doing on the ground in Derwentside was exactly in line what suddenly the, the, the Thatcher government was encouraging everybody to do. And we're already pursuing this, this line of uh, encouraging an enterprise culture, if you like, and then found, to our amazement, that we were getting very active encouragement by central government, which we were delighted to, uh, to accept, although not necessarily uh, agreeing with every aspect of it. After lunch, Prince Charles visited Consett to see the progress that had been made since his last visit. His first stop was Doe and Valley Foods. They employ 100 workers making upmarket snacks. They moved to Consett two years ago. He also visited Integrated Micro Products, a real success story with an annual growth rate of 100%. I'm not certain whether Consett is the best package. I believe some of the enterprise zones are at least equally attractive. From our point of view, what Consett gave us was assistance with preparing a business plan. They taught me how to become a businessman as opposed to an academic, and that was far more important than any financial reward. No, we didn't sit down and say, we are going to turn Derwentside around from being um, a public sector-orientated uh, community 
to one which was um, perceived to be based wholly on an enterprise culture, those words and phrases hadn't even been invented in 1979. Can we just move these? This is the district council's industry unit. Right. Um, we've just completed this year's progress review. 5,000 jobs on the ground. And it has to continue the work started by Laurie Haberan of finding a balance between wealth creation, the long-term aim, and what people really want now, jobs. The units created 5,000 in 188 new or expanding businesses in concert, but is now facing another recession. We know at the moment that there are companies which are having to shed labour, um, not many, and not vast quantities of labour, but nevertheless having to shed labour, which is, you know, regrettable under any circumstances. On the other hand, uh, not just as a district, but as a region, it's notable that uh, w in the past, whenever the, the region caught a chill, it was always the northeast which caught the flu. We felt the bite first and felt it, it uh, more severely. But the last 12, 18 months, there's been a notable tightening up of the, the national economy. And I think this region has probably felt it certainly less than, than other parts of the country. Uh, and that has to be a positive sign. I think it's important as well to remember that we've got a lot of inquiries that came through say, before 12 months ago that are still thinking about proceeding, but because of interest rate problems and yeah. that, uh, some decline, they're slowing down. In terms of projects which have gone ahead since we did we did the last survey. How's, how's that looking as a sort of six monthly review of mature projects? Yeah, right. Silica is the main one to recall from that. They Creating wealth requires guile. The industry unit is trying to tempt silica up north. It may be only 30 jobs, but it's still worth a bid. But what can Concert offer? The company is well established near Heathrow, ideal for the Europe of 1992. There's currently a workforce of 20, and the firm wants to expand. But Brian Singleton and his joint managing director, Tony Williams, are acutely aware that they lack space, and that is something Concert has in abundance. Really, it boils down to space. We have horrendous problems with space. A few weeks ago, we turned down two really big plants because we just did not have the facility to build them. We've got the expertise to do it, we've got the knowledge but we don't have the facilities. As far as the personal side goes of moving up there, I agree with Tony, it's going to be a wrench. But the world's getting smaller, and um, I think years ago, when there was no work up in the north, it was expected for the people to travel to obtain work, which many of them did. And I think maybe we're feeling that in reverse now, and we can understand their feelings. Um, but it's something that's got to be done. This empty factory will double Tony and Brian's floor space and halve their rent. A silent warehouse seems a world away from the protest and clamour of 1980. That concert will return to relatively decent levels of employment, I am convinced. Why? Because its labor force has got a good reputation, because the factories are going to be provided, they are being provided and will increasingly be provided, and because the time will come when the economy turns up and employers will be looking for ready-made factories with good labor forces available. The reason I came down here this morning was to show me disgust at Keith Joseph's policies. I mean, he put myself and another three and a half thousand people out to work at concert, and I didn't think it was right that he should get a free ride through the area. You could say that Arthur Carter is a figure from the past, part and parcel of the politics of protest. It was he who delivered the petition against concert's closure to the Prime Minister. And he remains a dissenting voice a man who believes a community spirit was sacrificed to political dogma, that concert lost its heart. The town was uh, steel, iron and steel, and, but now, since that's gone, you, you don't seem to identify with anything, all these little bits, factories here, there and everywhere, you know, uh, there's no great identity in the town. I think that, well, since the work should, 
and they have brought employment back, but it's taken them 10 years to get back to what we were in 1980. He's not to be found in any of the new factories. These aren't his skills. But there are jobs, 5,000 of them. That's more than those lost in the steelworks. 20 girls a shift now, and it's, uh, they're keeping up quite well, actually. The jobs have come in dribs and drabs. 20 here, 30 there, nibbling away at an unemployment rate that rose to over one third of the workforce in the wake of the closure, and which is now the lowest it's been for a decade, even though that's still ahead of the national average. Across the road, a nappy factory is another example of precisely those light industries which could be guaranteed to win ministerial approval. They gave the Secretary of State two packs of nappies for his new granddaughter. Consit still has high unemployment. More jobs have to be created for the thousands lost in other industries. But Lord Young is optimistic. The great thing about the North East is picked itself up. It's getting on with it. And whereas 10 years ago it had the businesses of the past, today it's developing the businesses of the future. I still think that uh, Consit was just a pawn in a big game that uh, no matter how big a profit we've been making, they were they're taking the decision to close Consit and they were going to do that so obviously I feel bitter to the people who made that decision because I think that the millions that they've spent on uh, landscaping and um, bringing new factories and development into the area I think that could have well been spent on upgrading the steelworks and keeping it open where I thought were better jobs than what they've brought in. We don't claim to have conquered the world we don't claim that Derwinside's uh, e overall economy is yet in the position where we can be described as prosperous but the foundations have been laid, uh, and that they've been laid in over the last 10 years, what have largely been adverse economic circumstances. And uh, in some ways, we've certainly reversed national trends as far as manufacturing employment is concerned, so to speak. Can I just come in and um, clip what you're saying, John? But um, the macro thing's one, one sense of it, yes, and uh, we may have problems responding to whatever the, the outside world throws at us. But I think, I mean, especially it's the community enterprise viewpoint, we're working with people. One of those people is Edna. Edna Dixon is a cook and the only employee of a new company called Cater4. Cater4 has its roots in the voluntary provision of lunches in a community hall. On the days Meals on Wheels didn't use the hall, Edna came in. She was funded by the Manpower Services Commission, one of the courses made available in the wake of the closure of the steelworks. I was, uh, before, before I came here, I was at the steelworks, you know, and then it closed in 1980, and then I went uh, to school for a while, <laughs> and then I came here with the MSC. You know, when the MSC started working, they, they paid us a wage, you know, where I moved up the, the lunches here. And then I went on the dole for a year, came back again to the MSC, <laughs> went on the dole for a year, and then came back with a T. MSC started. And then that's when this started up at the end of uh, ET. We tried to think of ways to keep us here, you know, to keep the lunches going. And somebody came up with the idea of have the cooperative. It's somehow typical of the decade concert and the country has gone through that the only way they can continue the service is by forming a business. Well, it was much simpler, you see, when I was being paid my wage from MSC. I was being paid a wage. Therefore, all the profit, you know, all the money that I was taking in from the meals was covering the cost of the food quite adequately. Cater for now has to make enough money to pay me a wage and to cover the cost of all the, the food, etc. Yes, this is it. <laughs> well, it, it says Edna Diligio. Cater 4 is still a business. It's never going to employ 250 people. They're still, they've got to trade and make a profit, so in that sense they're still a business. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the, the big leap.
if you like, um, the leap that cater for me, it was from, from running, or having things done to them to actually taking control of it themselves and being able to operate. Now, that is a big leap because there, it's a, a, a step in thinking. Um, now, since the last meeting, I had a letter from Companies House. Ten years after leaving the steelworks, Edna is a company director. Now, for the two new ladies that have started, uh, Bob can explain why we are a company's house and details of that, please, Bob. You've been trading now for nearly a year, and every limited company um, every year has to hold an annual general meeting to report back to its members, uh, because this is the board of directors, isn't it? But there are a lot of members out it's there. It's because it is a business a now, you see. When we first went into it, it didn't seem to be all this palaver. You know, it was put simply to us. And then gradually we find out, you know, there's more to it than meets the eye. And we just sorted out the best way we can. Because Edna is the only cook and she can't do everything, you know. The red dust has blown away and it's time to start. I've got the red dust and what have you over the houses and the filth and muck and... It's picking up, we'll get there. Jobs are so few and far between in concert. They say that concert's booming. Personal accounts uncovered during a survey on this estate in concert reveal the extent of the district's industrial revival. Built in the shadow of the steelworks, this estate houses a generation many of whom have a hole in their lives, just as great as the hole in the middle of their town. Do you think there should be more money available for them to come into the area, more incentive? Oh, there should be, definitely. I think it would bring a lot of the people back into the area. There's no factories coming back into the area. There's been an odd one open on number one there, but uh, they're wanting young people or with experience. There's nothing for the older person that's come out of the company. They just don't want to know if you're 40. My husband's been on the dole since 1980. Since the steelworks? Since the steelworks, and he wasn't in the steelworks. Mm -hmm. But well, I hope it comes back, back that the children, yeah. that my grandchildren, will be able to get a job when they want one. But you know, no, I mean, in 1980, when the steelworks closed, there was nothing. But it's starting again. You can see that the Well, it could be going in full circle, but yeah. as I say, mm -hmm. I hope I live to see it. Yes. But mm. whether I do or not is a different matter. There are those that, that do quite definitely say uh, there has been no net gain in manufacturing jobs in Derwentside now than, than existed Previously, I accept and agree. I understand and agree that a, a, a significant number of the new jobs that have been created have been, have been in the new areas of the, the service industries. Uh, a lot of that is uh, criticised perhaps for not being unionised, criticised perhaps for not paying the sort of rates of pay that prevailed in, in, in steel industries or whatever. But nevertheless, we have to deal with the world as it is and try to make it better. Perhaps one of the better things to come out of it all is the music co-op. Yeah, we can have the fire. Great. It's not very good, but I mean, that's not bad for 20 quid. It's all right, it's all right, yeah. That's a real Woolies one, isn't it? What? A real Woolies one, isn't it? Don't make them like this anymore, you know. It too grew out of the industrial collapse. You, what you're actually doing um, is changing from a C to an F. So that A is the third of F. Right? You've got to think in those sort of terms. But that's a little bit difficult, so all it is is condensed down. So I'll just leave it doing that.
One track on an album to mark the end of the decade is a song by Rod Clements of Lindisfarne. The music cooperative is an enterprise in its own right, a place where youngsters can come together and make music. Its culture is music, not enterprise, and perhaps this gives them a sense of reality when it comes to assessing all the talk of concerts revival. After all, they work with school leavers who know that for every job vacancy in the area, there are 20 unemployed to fill it. You know, I'm looking for an industrial regeneration because I think history, the last decade, has taught us a very serious lesson that reindustrialization isn't going to happen. You know, I mean, we do have a crisp factory in concerts, um, and I've got nothing, there's no, I've got no problem with that. Uh, however, <laughs> We've still got serious levels of, of unemployment, however it's disguised, whether it's disguised as, as ET schemes or a YTS scheme. We're still talking about a, a blocked situation. And all we're doing is trying to open doors and create space for people by providing a, a series of opportunities that wouldn't otherwise exist. We weren't alive when it, when it closed down. We were alive, but we can't remember very much. <laughs> we can't remember very much. So we just we're think we want to we've make got a to go look at the future. Today. We've yeah. got to look at the future and we've got to be optimistic, otherwise mm -hmm. we're going to have nothing. We've got to build it back up. Because it's not just going to happen overnight, but I mean, like, if we're optimistic, you know, it'll happen. If we want it, it'll, it'll happen eventually, yeah. <laughs> I hope. <coughs> I think that's the key to it all, like, optimism. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if we aren't optoptimistic about how we think concerts are not going to be if we just say, oh, well, I'll wait till what happens tomorrow and then tomorrow comes and there's still no way. You have to think towards the future and you have to be positive. Change got to come and I say, roll on that day. The steelworks have been closed for three months now. And with the steelworks, had gone a whole way of life. I'm going to live in what is virtually going to become a ghost town. It's not the camaraderie that there was, you know, and all, most of the people were steel workers where I used to drink that and that. That seems to have gone now. Just everybody wants to be a, an individual. You know, just they look after themselves and don't think about anybody else. But I think in general that's the way things are. I don't think it's right that people should be like that. But uh, I think that's what's happened. That, you know, people now are all for the self, and uh, it's a result nationwide. I think of uh, what's been going on in the last ten years. The communal ethics of the past may have faded with the closure of the works, but there is hope for the future, and as everywhere, it's in the voices of the young. I mean, Concert is just a small town, and there's small towns scattered all over Britain. You have to think towards the future, and you have to be positive. So you just have to work and work. <laughs> <laughs> <You> work. <laughs>